my friend's daughter is in the third stage of leukemia cancer she told me why allah says in the quran allah does not burden a soul beyond that it can bear is there any burden more than what i am going through now seeing my baby dying what does allah really mean by this verse i am trusting allah but i don't understand what this verse really means I'm really afraid of the doubts that makes me go away from Allah. May Allah protect. What your friend's daughter is referring to is the verse in the Quran, which is the last verse of Surah Baqarah. That's chapter number two, verse number eighty-six, verse number two hundred eighty-six. Well, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says that Allah does not lay a burden on any soul more than what it can bear. Allah. Does not lay a burden on any soul more than what it can bear, and it gives whatever good a person does, and it also gives punishment to what are evil they do. And the verse continues; it's a long verse. And again, Allah says that pray, our Lord, lay not on us a burden greater than we can bear. So, if you see in this long verse of the Quran, which is the last verse of Surah Baqarah, and the Mufassirin they say that the last verses of Surah Baqarah, they were directly revealed by Allah to the beloved Prophet. Directly, most of the Quran, almost all, was revealed through Archangel Gabriel. But there are some verses, including this last verse of Surah Baqarah, they they were revealed directly to Allah Subhanahu. They were revealed directly by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. and the starting of the verse it says that allah does not lay on any soul or any person burden greater than can bear but in the middle of the verse again allah says pray that oh my lord lay not on me a burden greater than i can bear so it seems to be a little bit contradicting that the first part of the verse says allah does not lay on any person a burden greater than he or she can bear then why do we have to pray that oh lord rabbana lay not on us a burden greater than we can bear here the mufassirin they say that allah does not lay on any human being on any soul on any person a burden greater than he or she can bear but what happens that unfortunately we human beings we lay a burden on our own self more than we can bear That's the reason we pray to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala that lay not on us a burden greater than we can bear. That means Allah does not lay on anyone a burden greater than he or she can bear. But we ourselves, it's like saying we dig our own grave. Or in Urdu we say that apne pair pe kulari marna. In English we say we dig our own grave. So because of the actions we do, for example, Allah says don't have alcohol. If we have alcohol, then we have family problems. Then we have breakup in the family. A person has alcohol, and the lady is pregnant. Then the child is born with the alcohol fetal syndrome. So we are laying a burden greater than what we can bear. So here we do dua to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, indirectly telling us that please help us so that we follow you and so that we don't lay on ourselves a burden greater than we can bear. So this is the verse that your friend daughter was referring to. Now coming to a question that she is suffering from. Leukemia, and she seeing her daughter. I mean, your friend's daughter. She seeing her daughter that she is dying of leukemia of blood cancer. So who can have a burden that is greater than this? Seeing your own child dying of leukemia, can they be a burden greater than this? Is the question. So how come Allah is saying that He does not lay on any person a burden? Greater than he or she can bear. A point to be noted is that Allah clearly says in the Quran, in Surah Mulk, chapter number sixteen, verse number two, "Allah di khalakul maut wal hayata." Allah has created death and life to test which of you is good in deeds. So this life for the human beings is a test by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and depending upon how well you do, you will either be rewarded or you will be punished. So this life is a test for the hereafter. There are various hadith. and with the prophet has said that don't you know of the people of the past that 
when they were nails hammered in the head, when they were cut from the head into two, yet they did not give up the faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you read the historical records and if you read the life of the Sahabas and the people that came before, if you, leave, if you read about them, no human being today can say that we are anywhere close to the amount of level that they were tested. The Sahabas and the messengers and the people that came before. So to say that is there anyone who can have a burden more than a mother watching her child being, you know, a child dying. If you read the stories of the Sahabias, when the children used to go for jihad and when they used to get killed, they used to pray to Allah that give me more than children and I would love them to give their life for the sake of Allah. So what you are saying is totally untrue. Now coming to your question. That is Allah speaking in the truth when he says he does not lay on anyone a burden greater than he or she can bear? Yes, Allah always speaks the truth. Here, there can be various reasons why your child is dying of leukemia. He knows the best. May be possible that the person hasn't followed the commandments of Allah. Maybe they got involved in drugs. Maybe they got involved in alcoholism. And there may be a problem. Maybe she was involved in certain things which are haram and this is a punishment for that. Or maybe she is a very good pious lady and maybe Allah knows that the child that is born, maybe he will deviate. He may go on the wrong path and cause distress to her. So instead of that, it is better that the child dies. And we know very well that if a parent doesn't have children, if the parents don't have children, they are sad. But if the parents have a child and they die, they are more sad. But if a parent has a child and he becomes disobedient and he becomes a rejecter of the faith, he becomes a kafir and he disobedient the parent, that sorrow is the worst. So maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that this child may deviate, may be disobedient to the parent, may become a kafir. And we have several such examples. We have the story of Musa alayhi salam and Khidr alayhi salam in Surah Kahf. And when Musa alayhi salam asks Khidr alayhi salam that I want to accompany you so that I can get some knowledge, he only tells him that don't ask me any questions unless, until I tell you on my own. And when they are traveling, Khidr alayhi salam, he kills a young boy. So Musa alayhi salam is astonished. How can you kill innocent soul? And later on is the reply given that this child belonged to a very pious couple and they were very muttaqi. But this child would grow up to be a disobedient child, would deviate and would be away from Islam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preferred that to this pious couple, he will give another child which would be pious. So that's the reason Khadr salam kills him and Allah provides another child. So here he says Khadr salam that it is all not from me, it is from Allah. So regarding the question that your child has leukemia, I don't know what is the reason. I'm just giving you the various options what can happen. Allah knows the best. But the test of a moment, the test of a believer is we say Alhamdulillah. We say Alhamdulillah. We always thank Allah that whatever it is, at least he gave me a child, whether it be for few months or it may be for few years. And we never know. The important point to be noted is that we should have faith in Allah. And whatever decision Allah takes, we have to be happy with that. And I like to give you the incidents of my wife, that my wife told me, that her mother, before she was born, there were six children of hers, after birth, they died. Some few days after birth, some few months, and the oldest, 11 months. 
there were totally 13 out of which she has only four brothers that are alive and after that six children died and then she was born and alhamdulillah her mother she had faith in Allah she never complained to Allah this is by the grace of my Lord and now we can realize that mashallah my wife I consider her, her to be a muttaqi I consider her, her to be a pious and maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know preserved her for me so we have to take it in the right spirit all this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so Allah tests a moment tests a moment that does he complain so imagine six children of her after being born were died and later on two and two other two were aborted imagine eight in spite of this there was no complaint from my mother-in-law to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this shows the taqwa so you are telling that your one child has leukemia blood cancer and you're complaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala my advice to you would be that you should have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whatever Allah does Allah does the best for his creation so we have to thank Allah and agree with his destiny and we have to follow his commandments pray to him thank him that's the reason whenever whenever any good happens we say alhamdulillah and we thank Allah when any loss takes place also we say alhamdulillah what we say it could have been worse I remember I met someone and I asked him how are you he told me alhamdulillah it could have been better I told you are a Muslim and you are replying Alhamdulillah it could have been better you should reply Alhamdulillah it could have been worse this is the reply of a believer not Alhamdulillah it could have been better this is the Western reply the Westerner will reply how are you it could have been better a Muslim will reply Alhamdulillah excellent or if he has to say something he can say Alhamdulillah it could have been worse so what you have to realize that a believer is always thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whatever the situation is so I request you to tell your friend that they should have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is a test Allah is testing Allah tests different people with different things some with wealth some with poverty some with health some with disease so different people are tested with different ways and the Quran says that your children and your wife are a fitna a fitna means a test so Allah says in the Quran that your children and your wife they are a test so Allah is testing you and letting he wants to test whether you have faith in Allah subhanahu or not so this is a good opportunity you have you should have strong faith and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and keep on thanking him and asking for forgiveness for whatever wrong we have done hope that answers the question